Good morning. Am I on? Is the mic on? Yes, it is on. Uh, it's nice and warm in here this morning, so instead of giving you a warm welcome, I'm going to wish you a cool and breezy welcome to church this morning. Hopefully you're getting a little bit of a breeze somewhere. Uh, welcome also to all of you for, who are joining us from Pleasant Manor and from home in the comfort of your air conditioning. Um, and, uh, but here we are all together, and uh, I'm going to greet you this morning with uh, words from Psalm 89. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him? O God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Good morning and welcome everyone for being here. Uh, the first song we're gonna do this morning is, uh, has a bit of a Latin feel and I was kind of thinking, hmm, maybe that's kind of what our sister church in Pereira would be singing. Uh, please stand if you're able to and join us with I Will Sing For Joy. I will sing for joy because I have his love. Life and help come daily from the Lord above. All I want to share with everyone I see. Jesus makes us whole and sets his people free. I sing for I have his love. Help comes from the Lord above. I want to tell all I see. Jesus wants to set you free. In your many trials, he will help you through. He will never leave you or abandon you. He needs you to help, but there is much to do. Let us be courageous as he asks us to. I sing, for I have his love. Help comes from the Lord above. I want to tell all I see. Jesus wants to set you free. I sing, for I have his love. Help comes from the Lord above. I want to tell all I see. Jesus wants to set you free. Thank you. Please be seated. The next one is uh, an old oldie but a goodie, but with some uh, newer words in it, renew your church. Renew your church, its ministries restore, both to serve and adore. Make it again as all throughout the land light from the sand meet some shadows of the night where greed and hatred spread their blight oh send us forth with power and good help us god be renewed teach us your words reveal it till the cry on your path let it shine Tell of your works, your mighty hands and grace. From each page, show your face. As you have loved the sent your Son, and our salvation now is won. Oh, set our hearts with love beside, 
Help us, God, know your word. Teach us to pray, for you are always near. Your voice still I set us here. Our souls are restless till they rest in you, where we find strength anew. Before your presence, keep us still, that we may find for us your will, and seek your guidance every day. Teach us, Christ, how to pray. Teach us to love with heart and mind and soul. You, O Christ, be our goal. Break down the walls of prejudice and hate. Leave us not to our fate. As you have loved and given your life to end hostility and strife, O oh, share your grace from heaven above, teach us Christ how to love. O oh, holy God, some of us see you today from mountains of joy and confidence, mountains of gratitude and praise. Some of us seek you today from valleys of grief or doubt, valleys of loss or exhaustion. And yet, we gather here together, each in our own space. We gather together to reflect on your word and our life in your world. Holy Spirit, be with us now as we sing and pray together that we may hear your voice and understand your way. This we pray through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Big friend? Oh, Shirley has announcements first. Getting ahead of myself. I was saying this morning, I, I've, I've said before, it's, it's okay for me to be worship leader when I'm up here because I'm, I'm here anyway, but it seems that every time I end up being the worship leader, I end up doing it the Sundays that I'm playing piano instead of the Sundays that I'm singing, so it causes a little bit of confusion. So hopefully we'll get it all right. I'm going to invite Patty up right now to make an announcement. Good morning. So a few weeks ago, you probably received an email about uh, an event coming up. On August 20th, we're going to the Well and Jack Fish baseball game, and uh, we have tickets for sale. We have uh, tickets at $25 each, and they include seating in a, a special area called the dock. It's covered. There are tables and chairs. It includes uh, snacks and food and drink. We have uh, purchase 20 tickets for this area, and they're $25 each. We have sold 16, so we're hoping to sell a few more. We also have uh, more that we can, can sell and accommodate more people, so we hope you'll uh, consider joining us. You can reach out to me if you have any questions. You can reach out to Linda if you're ready to purchase tickets, and uh, we hope to see you there. Thank you. Thanks, sounds exciting. The first two announcements that I'm going to make this morning are not in your bulletin, so you might want to take special note of them. Uh, we have received an invitation from the Niagara United Mennonite Church to do a exchange with them in the month of August, and so we were very happy to ex accept that invitation. So on August the 7th, um, the people from Niagara UM Church will be uh, joining us here in our sanctuary for uh, our worship service. And then on August the 21st, we're going to be closing this building and we're going to be going there to participate or to, just to join in with their worship service. So um, I hope that, um, that you are as excited about that as I am. It, it also gives a relief to some of our volunteers and uh, it'll be a nice time for, for us to connect with, with our neighbor church. 
The other uh, announcement that's not in your bulletin is we're looking for more scripture readers. Uh, a number of people did sort of uh, decline during COVID uh, to, to read scriptures. So um, Denise Horn will be making up the new schedule very soon after uh, starting in September. So if you think that's something that you could do and would like to participate in that, uh, please contact um, Denise or myself and uh, so that uh, she can get you on that list and we uh, can have a few more readers up here. Uh, just a few more announcements that are in your bulletin. Office hours will be changed this week. Uh, Marianne is actually going to be helping out at the uh, Vacation Bible School at her home church, St. Catherine's UM, and so she'll only be in the office in the afternoons. Um, there is, I want to thank the missions team. Uh, they are um, always looking for opportunities in the community. Dave, we really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, there's an announcement in your bulletin. Uh, the significant rise in prices had less, has led to an increased food insecurity for many who live in our community. The mission team has therefore decided to hold a food drive for Newark neighbors. Please drop off your donations in the food bin at the front door. Foods and snacks for breakfast and school lunches are also especially appreciated. Uh, we also have a new letter from Pereira Church in Columbia that's on the bulletin board. Um, our budget donations, um, we have a, f uh, currently a fundraiser going on for the Friends of the Mennonite Center uh, of the Ukraine with a goal of $30,000. So far we have already received 23300 so we're getting closer to that goal. We ask that you continue to keep the Ukraine in your efforts and to consider supporting this, uh, this effort. Uh, there are also, um, in the bulletin, there's regarding uh, MCC. Uh, there are other, two other opportunities for giving there. Um, one is for, um, MCC is joining the Humanitarian Coalition Appeal for the hung crisis, Hunger Crisis in Sub-Saharan Africa. And for a limited time, donations made by individual Canadians will be matched by the Canadian government. Uh, so it's a time to make your dollar uh, stretch more if that is something that you'd like to support. There is more information in the bulletin regarding that. And also, um, the Ukraine has a massive need for relief kit and hygiene kit supplies. Uh, one of the things they're especially short of is soap, and I would really like soap. So again, there are details in the bulletin um, saying how you can help with that. And uh, that's all the announcements, so I'll now turn it over to you. <laughs> Once again, everyone, good morning. It, we have such a wonderful day. It's uh, sunshine outside. Uh, I believe this week that we are going to receive some rain, uh, and that will be such a blessing. I know for my farm where I oversee, uh, water is in desperate need, uh, so uh, we can seek joy in that. Uh, some of the uh, prayers and concerns that are listed in our bulletin, uh, we still have a prayer for Dora. Uh, we need to continue to hold Dora in our prayers as she deals with this heart condition. Uh, Sheila Gaiman, uh, she's un undergoing cancer, as we know. Uh, and we need to pray for strength uh, and, and encouragement as well. It can be very discouraging uh, when you're going through these things and you feel very low. We have our sister church in Pereira. Sister church in Pereira, uh, I am actually looking forward to going and visiting them uh, in the, the month of August, so I'll be able to meet Andrea and, and uh, the crew there. Uh, but they continue uh, to need our prayers, right? They're a young church, and this is a way that we can uh, join together in the name of Jesus uh, to support them, uh, a tangible way. Uh, the other things that I bring up too for, for ministry time, uh, like Shirley did, some of these ministries that are emerging, uh, we may not be able to give to them, but it would be definitely good to hold them in our prayers, uh, to hold them in our thoughts. Uh, people in Africa, they're experiencing a, a huge drought right now, right? And uh, famine. Uh, we also have our, our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. We have deep roots in the Ukraine, uh, and uh, it, is, it is good for us to continue to hold them in our thoughts and our prayers, because our prayers do uh, make a difference. They do make an impact, and when we come before the Lord, uh, that, that makes a difference in our lives, but also in their lives. So with that being said, uh, let's come before the Lord and, and pray for these, these concerns. Heavenly Father, once again, we give thanks for today. We give thanks that you have, you have given us life, that you've given us breath. 
We give thanks for the day today that uh, as we look amongst the trees, the harvest is coming, uh, the workers are here, and we're thankful that we live in such a place as Canada where we can have food readily available. We also pray for those that are in need. Shirley brought up this, uh, this uh, not idea, but this reality that many of us in our community are experiencing food security. It may not be that they uh, don't have any food. It may just mean that they're eating less, uh, that they have less food on their table because their dollar no longer goes far enough. And we're reminded, or I'll remind you, that uh, 30% of most of the people that visit food banks are children. Like Shirley asked, granola bars, juice boxes. These things are in need. Lord, you have a, a heart and a passion for those uh, who are marginalized. Throughout Scripture, as we read, we, have, we hear your heart for those that are down and out. Those like children in our community that are going hungry. So we lift them up to you. We also lift up to you Dora. She's dealing with this heart condition, and I pray that you'll continue to surround her with people that will encourage her, that your hand will be upon her, and that you will give her peace as she's navigating these uncertain waters. We pray again for Sheila. We lift her up. She's going through cancer, such an awful disease that can be so discouraging to go through, that can sap the life out of you, that can make you feel like you're just down in the dumps. And I pray at this very moment that your hand would be upon her, that you would rally people around her, that her community would make an impact in her life, that those who know Jesus will be able to go and use opportunities as they sit with them to share their hope that they have, to share how they have been set free, to share how they are with her no matter what is going on. Lord, we also pray for our brothers and sisters in Pereira, we give thanks that you have united us with them and that they, even though they are, what, 10 hours away by plane, that they are with us because they are in Christ too. I pray specifically for Adriana that you will continue to uh, build her up, that you will continue to form her and shape her as a leader and that as she experiences hardship, she will find hope, she will find strength in you. Lord, we give thanks that we were once again able to gather together, that we were able to sing praises to you as a community, that we were able to pray, that we are able to uh, hear from your scripture. Lord, it's so important that we gather together. Yes, we can encounter you in so many different ways, through the beauty of creation, reading a good book, or just sitting in silence. But we know that throughout scripture, you call us to be together. Maybe that's because we encourage each other when we're together. Maybe it's because we pray for one another when we're together. And maybe it's just that sense of being part of something bigger. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the people that you have gathered here and those who are worshiping with us virtually. Bless and keep us now, Lord. We ask this in your name. Amen.
to one hope ever pressing at one in work and prayer. Still schism's tribulation and hatred fuel our war. We wait the consummation of peace forevermore. The saints their watch are keeping, their cries go up, how long? And soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. Yet we on earth have union with God the three in one, that mystics we is one. Oh, happy ones and holy, the tears grace that we, like them the meek and holy, may live eternally. First scripture reading today comes from 1 Corinthians 14, 33b to 35. As in all the churches of the saints, women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be subordinate, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to know, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. And from Ephesians 2, 14 to 18. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to those who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. I'll use herb stand here to hold down my papers. So throughout uh, my work at the mission, one part of my job that I actually really enjoy is going to meet with other uh, churches. Uh, prior to coming to Bethany, I, would, uh, I was a bit of a circuit rider, and I would go from the Reformed churches to the, the Methodist churches to the Baptist churches to the United churches. And, and visit with them. Sometimes this visit was coming for a Sunday morning and my, young, my youngins would come along and they, they would experience a diversity in theology, a diversity in worship, uh, some things they loved, some things they bemoaned, just like all children. Right? But uh, recently I went uh, to the Methodist church and uh, I met with a, a fellow named Matt. Uh, he's the lead pastor of this church. And uh, we were talking for probably about an hour, and I don't know how it came up, but I had talked about how more and more as I mature in my faith, that I'm experiencing God in different ways. And prior to being a pastor, Matt worked at a publishing house, and he went to his bookshelf, and he had about six of these books. It's called Spiritual Pathways. And he said, well, Marty, we, we all know that, that people encounter God in different ways, right? People uh, may encounter God by an inspiring sermon, maybe not this one, but some inspiring sermon, or maybe reading uh, a very thoughtful book like this one. Uh, but they can also encounter God as they go camping. Uh, I think of how many people go camping here, and they probably look up at the stars and go, wow, I echo the sentiments of the psalmist as I stand in awe of what God has done and what God has made, 
wow. And maybe there's other people that they don't need to hear a sermon, they don't need to to, uh, sit outside and look at his creation. Maybe it's just sitting silently in the church, taking in the stained glass windows, being filled with his peace. This is the way that they encounter. And why is this important to me? Why is this important? Because I grew up in a, a setting that said that unless you do this and this and this, you're truly not encountering God. Unless you're reading your Bible every day, praying for 15 minutes, and then sharing what you've learned, you, you're, you're really not drawing, drawing close to God. But as I've matured in my faith, I've learned that yes, I can encounter God in these different ways. And yet one of the core values that I'll come back to is that community is still a part of it. Yes, I can go and encounter God by seeing the the lake and the sunset over it, but that does not negate, that does not replace coming together as a community. One of the aspects that really stood out to me in this book was the idea of advocacy being part of a way that you draw close to God. I think of the, the prophets and, and many of the leaders in, in the Bible, they really did advocate. They overturned some tables. They really kicked up some dust within their community about some of the things that they said. Even Paul's letters, I'm sure, caused a, a little bit of unrest within these communities. More and more as I'm growing in my faith, I'm learning the advocacy, especially in the role that I'm in right now, is a way that I really draw near to God and help bring, their king, bring his kingdom closer to this world. Food security is a reality, right? I grew up in a, a, a world where, as I looked around, I didn't realize it when I was young, but many of the people in my school didn't have enough food on their table. We could easily be uh, fooled by the big houses here in Niagara-on-the-Lake and think that everyone has lots of money. Interest rates went up one whole percentage. It's one of the the fastest increases that have happened in the last 40 years. These These types of moves economically are significantly going to impact families in our community. And I wonder as a community, as individuals, how we are going to advocate for the for the least of these. How are we going to continue to champion some of the things that are deeply embedded within our Mennonite heritage. We are going through this sermon series uh, called Holy Troublemakers. Prior to this, I was going to preach a different sermon based on the book of Luke. Uh, But hey, I want to fit in in line with, with Herb. And so I thought of this wonderful, wonderful person with a great name, right? Lucy Jane Ryder Mayer, right? This is... It just echoes, it just echoes deep south for me in her name. Lucy Jane Reitermeyer uh, grew up and she was an academic. She loved going to school and even as she graduated, she, she created a science textbook for young children and it was called uh, Fairy Tales of Chemistry and it was a, a basic textbook for children to learn chemistry. She was a chemist by faith or a chemist by, by trade. She then married, uh, married her husband, and through that, they established the Chicago School, I have to write this down, the Chicago School for Home and Foreign Mission. And it was a school that actually helped to equip women so that they could be better agents of God's redemption, both within their home and abroad. But you have to imagine in in the 1800s, a woman going to school, that was already a little risky. But a woman being equipped to go out into the mission field, to be a stronger leader within their household, that really kicked up some dust. And I'm sure that there were many people within uh, the faith community that gave her a lot of flack quoting such a, a line as a woman should remain silent and that if, if she had any questions, why not go and ask her husband? I'm sure that there were many people that pushed back against her 
but she was filled with this vision of, of equipping women, of being an advocate so that they could then go out and be better agents of God's redemption, better, better uh, people within their households, and also more faithful missionaries, right? Can you imagine that you would send someone into the mission field without even teaching them basic stuff like theology or church history or how to run their pocketbooks? This, this individual was, was a trailblazer in the sense that she knew that part of the, the puzzle, part of the reason why this scripture in Corinthians was even written was that many women did not have the education that their male counterparts did. Right? Even if we go back to, to the time when the Corinthian letter was written to uh, the people in Corinth, first of all, it was a very dysfunctional church. They had a lot of problems. They had a lot of infighting. And one of the, one of the key, th- one, of the, one of the elements that was creating some disunity was that there were sort of two tiers of, of worship, right? We would have the men worshiping down here, but guess where the women would be? Women would probably be out in the narthex, Right? They wouldn't even be part of this room. And so they would hear me speaking, and then they would yell into their husbands and say, what was that guy saying? You know? And and what what does that mean? And, And through these interruptions, not only would it disturb the worship, but how do you think that the men would feel? I've got my... I've got my wife yelling from the back and now, now I'm really embarrassed because she's asking a question that's uneducated or not informed. And now as a person, I feel humiliated. As a, as a worship community, once again, we're having these interruptions take place. And why are they taking place? Because the women did not know. They did not have the opportunity to learn. And so we come back to someone like uh, Lucy Jane who advocated and said this is a key piece. If we are going to equip people to be in the mission field, if we are going to equip people so that they could be better agents of God's redemption, they need some teaching. They need some experience. I believe that, that Lucy Jane was one of these women that truly drew close to God through advocacy. After uh, establishing this school, she actually continued on to pursue that women should have a a role in as deaconesses. It's one of the most famous things that she's known for. She went back to the the Methodist church. Uh, I believe it was the the Episcopal church before there was some breakups, but uh, she went back to her church and said that the women should play a leadership role within the church. So think about how much dust that would have raised, right? Okay, well, you can have your school, you can equip your women, good, godly, okay. They're going to be good missionaries, they're going to be better wives. But now you're coming into a community and you're saying that these, these women should be leaders? No. A woman needs to remain silent. You know, if she has any questions, go talk to your husband after the service when you're eating at, uh, uh, at, uh, at Silks down the street. Don't, don't humiliate your husband. Don't, don't uh, you know, open your mouth and, and, and disrupt us. But this woman advocated for this role and actually was able to bring it about. And she has been uh, enshrined as one of the key trailblazers to bring back this role. And it's one of, the, one of the most beautiful things that I see within our Mennonite tradition that we are very egalitarian, right? We believe that women and men can lead together, that we're equals, right? That, that God created us all in his image and that if we know him, if we are living for him, we stand as equals. And there are many other beautiful faith traditions that I would already have been thrown out from by this point. You know, Wendy, Wendy would have never been able to stand here and even read scripture because A, it would have had to be a man, but even more within some traditions, it would have had to be the pastor, right? When we encounter God, we begin to live for him. We become part of his family, 
right? We become part of his family. And one of uh, my favorite passages within Paul's epistles is uh, Ephesians 2. It's one of these passages that talks about our identity and our place within his family, right? That at one time, all of us here, because I don't think that there's any Jewish people here, all of us were far off from God, right? We were, we were aliens, we were foreigners within his, his family, but through the death of Christ, through his death on a cross and ascension uh, to, to heaven, we have been brought near. We have that access to be part of his family. And we're not second-class citizens. We are part of his family. We're his children. And as his children, we are also equals, right? Just because I'm a pastor does not make me better than, you know, Hilke or, or Vic or, you know, uh, Cheryl. We are all equals within his family. We, we read through that, that passage in Ephesians, but I'm also reminded as I was sitting here today of the, uh, the passage in Galatians 3.28 where it talks about that there's uh, neither slave nor free, Jew nor Gentile, male or female, but we're all together in Christ. Isn't that profound? Because as, as I've went through faith, I've had this sense that sometimes I'm not always equal with others. That sometimes I'm marginalized. Sometimes I'm, I'm put off. But I'm not. Through Christ's death, I, I am actually part of a, a wonderful, dysfunctional family that is called to be his agents of redemption within this world, that is called to, to bring his kingdom closer in whatever way God has gifted us with, right? And some of us, you know what? Some of us, coming back to, to Gary's book here, great, great read. I'm, I don't know, I might put it down after this because I've already read too much. But, you know, all of us have been gifted with different ways, different different uh, unique giftings that help us to be, you know, a, a tool within God's uh, tool belt. Some of us are great academics. Some of us are very smart and God's gifted us with brains. But I also know, as I, I know this congregation, there are many doers within this congregation that, that would be thinking in their head, you know, Marty, let's wrap this up. I've got your point. I want to go out and I want to do some work for the Lord. I want to I wanna be able to bring some, some food to those people over in Pleasant Manor because I know that they're on fixed incomes and I have lots of food to give so I can give that to them. Right? This, this is the beauty of God's community that he has built. This is the beauty of God's body here on earth, Christ's body on earth. We are all different. And so often in our lives, we look to others and we say, but, but only if I could be like that, then I would feel like I'm a, a real good faithful follower. Or we feel like failures because, you know what, we have tried to have this morning routine for several decades, and it's good for the first little bit, and then it falls off the, the way. And there is merit in discipline, but there's also merit in realizing how God has created you and who you are and embracing that and saying, this is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, the way that God's made you. And also to recognize that throughout your life, you may change. I don't, I don't know about you, but even within the last 10 years, my life has changed. I am not the same person that I was before. Right, guys? They're, they're used to me using them as, as tools within my sermon. They're, they're smiling at me, but I know that when I get in the car, I'm going to get a, Dad. But I, 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 I give that thanks, right? They're, they're kids that God has created in his own image and gifted in certain ways. For me and my role at the mission... Uh, God has really switched how I encounter him. Before this, I was a pastor. I would sit in my office all day and I would read beautiful books like this 
and I would read beautiful commentaries that would give me deeper insight as to the context of the passage and what was going on and what was the intent of Paul or the intent of uh, who was writing this book so that I could come and teach and lead. But God has brought me to a new place in life where I've been able to, to advocate for those that are disadvantaged. I've been able to be the hands and feet to Jesus in a tangible way. Right? We were struggling as a mission. What, how do we actually present the gospel? Right? So how do we tell people about Jesus? And I wrestled with it a lot. Right? Do, we, do we put tracks in their, in their bags? Do we, do we pull people aside and tell them that they're sinners in need of grace and if they don't pray, they're going to be going to hell? Or is it tangibly showing them by giving them food, by asking them how they are, and then praying with them? How do we do that? Because those are all good ways of, of sharing the gospel. Some of them are a little, you know, cringy for me, right? They make me sort of feel a little sick to my stomach. Uh, but they're all good ways. But I believe that God has brought me to this place, at least at the mission, to be able to advocate for those that are poor to be able to show his love to these people, to give them food that God has blessed this whole region with, that's probably going to go into the garbage so that they can have healthy food on their tables, so that the children, the, the most vulnerable of our world, they, they have no way of accessing food, so that they can have a good meal on their table, to be able to grow, to be able to potentially succeed so that they can uh, have a better life. Well, many of them are actually going to be stuck in that cycle of poverty. Right? Fifth, sixth, seventh generation uh, poverty. But how do we do that? How do, how do we as a community at this time and this place within uh, Virgil, within St. Catharines, with wherever you live, what ways are we helping to show others that we are for Jesus? Maybe it's not advocacy. Maybe that, maybe that just totally goes against the way that God has made you. Maybe it's through prayer and relationship. Maybe it's through giving the, 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 the talents that God has given you. You have, you have been given lots and now you are able to give to others so that they can have a better life. Advocacy may not be your model, may not be how you encounter God, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you are a child of God, if you love Jesus, there is something that you can do this week, this month, this year to make an impact for his kingdom, to share with others the hope that you have within. Maybe it's a phone call. I see some empty seats here. I see some people that I love, love dearly. I wonder if that's giving some of our friends a phone call and not saying, hey, I haven't seen you at church, right? So when are you coming out? You know, COVID's, COVID's over. But maybe it's just phoning them up and saying, how is life? How are your children? How can I pray for you? And then stopping the conversation, right? It's through that love that we make an impact. It's through that, that going across the room that we're going to make an impact. So this week, as we go from this place, as we are sent people in the name of Jesus, I challenge you to think and reflect about how you're going to make an impact in the community and then do it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, I give thanks. I give thanks for these people because as I look around this room, as I'm standing on the stage, I already see so many impact makers for your kingdom. I see people that have been given, uh, given lots of stuff that are freely giving it out. I see people that are gifted with their experiences that are going to, to people's uh, homes and helping them out. I see people that are gifted relationally, that are going and ministering to those people that are shut in. People like Sheila, people like Dora, people like our friends at uh, Pleasant Manor. 
as your people, we know that we have been sent. That a major piece to our faith is not only knowing you and receiving you as our Savior, but to go out as your agents, as your people in this community where you have placed us, to bring your kingdom closer, to show your love to people in tangible ways. That there's more to faith than just coming to church and knowing who you are and what to do. Faith without action is dead, as it says in the book of James. And so, Lord, we lean into you. We lean into you to fill us with your spirit, to give us wisdom, to open our eyes so that we can see these opportunities that are right in front of us. And Lord, don't only fill us with your spirit, but give us the courage to step out and do something in your name. Lord, I thank you for this place. I thank you for the people that gather here. They're so gifted. They're so wise. Their lives are filled with experience. And I pray that this week, we would all use our gifts to bring you glory. We would all use our, our, our DNA, our, our attitudes, our experiences to bring your kingdom closer to this community, closer to this world, so that those who are hurting, those that, who are uh, experiencing duress, distress, can experience your goodness. Lord, equip us and send us once again. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This next song, it's a bit of a, a newer one, but it really uh, exemplifies what uh, Marty was telling us about with uh, uh, breaking down the walls between in our relationships. Let's bow for our offering prayer. 
Dear Lord and Father, as you are faithful to us, may we be faithful to you. Faithful with our time and energy, faithful with our possessions and our wealth. Receive these gifts by your grace. Multiply and use them through the power of the Holy Spirit to make real your reign of love, justice, and peace in our world. Amen. I invite you to rise if you're able to join us on the closing hymn, uh, song. It's Let the Words of the Lord Jesus Christ Dwell in You. Let the words of the Lord Jesus Christ dwell in you. Let the words of the Lord Jesus Christ dwell in you. And whatever you say, and whatever you do, and whatever you say, and whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead to give us new life in Let the words of the Lord Jesus Christ dwell in you. Let the words of the Lord Jesus Christ dwell in you. And whatever you say, and whatever you do, and whatever you say, and whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead to give us new life in I know that COVID can easily cause us to be tired. I know that stepping up and walking across the room and advocating for others often can make us nervous. But I want to leave you with this assurance. As Jesus reappeared to his disciples in their moments of despair after he had been crucified, he said, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them giving them the Holy Spirit. I want to reassure you and let you know that as God's people, He is sending you. But He's not sending you alone. He has equipped you with His Holy Spirit that is already going before you in the work that He has prepared. So go in His name. Go as His sent people filled with His Spirit this week. Amen. <laughs>